Hey guys, all right, today we are back with another potential history video. This time, Meme Tanks 3, thick boys. We're getting thick today, ladies and gentlemen. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Been a while since we've watched some meme takes. Feels good to be back. Let's just jump right into it. Oh man, there are some baddies out today. You are not lying, son. But look at her booty. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Oh my God. Yo, these gotta be the biggest titties I've ever seen in my life, son. Oh, oh fuck. They look natural too, look at them bounce. Yo, look at that one right there going on spring break. Oh, okay. Man, I would tear that shit up. <laughs> There's a pretty lady behind it too. Oh, she's super pretty. Yeah, she's cute. <laughs> Meme tanks. Cancer. Sir. This video is sponsored by Meme the free tanks. Play online game Warthog. Cancer. Use the link in the description below to sign up for free and to get a free premium tanker aircraft in three days of premium time. But more on that in a second. Free to when play games. Tank, there are three Cancer. factors to keep in mind: maneuverability slash speed, armor protection, and firepower. In an ideal world, you'll have an equal balance of all three. And you can see this reflected with tanks today. Although there are some variations, some being heavier and some being lighter, the idea is to have something that won't be a pushover, can get around pretty well, and can kill almost anything it runs into. This video is yeah. not about that though. This is about three tanks that said fuck it to the mobility part in a very strange period of tank design that resulted in super heavy vehicles that almost exclusively didn't see combat. So just as a heads up, well, all these vehicles sad. are pretty rare and there's not a lot of footage of them, so be prepared to see some clips multiple times or other stuff is filler. Also be prepared for the cursed watermark. <laughs> Watermark's okay. The past is the worst and I am not paying them for something that is in public domain. Okay, let's do this. All right, all right, next up at the stage, hide your countries, hide your resources, and hide your spices, because she's kind of everybody out here. Welcome to the stage, the Tog 2. Ooh, the Tog 2 was the second design developed by the Special Vehicle Development Committee, made up of people that had worked on the original British tanks of the First World War that became nicknamed the Old Gang. This group had a very bad case of do the same thing as last time syndrome with the designs they came up with. It was even worse with the Tog 1, but Tog 2 was created with the There's idea opening in mind the tank? that World War 2 may devolve into the same trench warfare scenario as World War 1, and because of that, they created this 80-ton behemoth to break through enemy emplacements in a World War 1 style assault. This 80 fucking tons? How did it fucking move? God Damn. However, had no basis in reality for what World War II was, and by the time it got to testing, the vehicle was outdated and the project was cancelled. All that being said, though, it did have some good innovations for the outdated oh. design logic that drove its creation, including torsion bar suspension, a 12-cylinder diesel electric engine powering two electric motors to drive the sprockets, and a 17-pounder for the main gun, which nice. is much better than the very underpowered guns proposed to be put into the TOG-1. But with 8.5 miles an hour for a top speed, this thing would have just gotten eaten up on the battlefield, and it's very understandable why it was cancelled. Yep. There's still one TOG-2 left at the Bobbington Tank Museum that you can see today. This beauty all the way from the City of Lights may have run away from you at first, but don't worry, she's a real collaborator in art. GTA. For the Char 2 C. Let's see what everybody Char 2 C. What's up? The Char 2 C looks like someone took nice. an FT 17 and Holy. elongated it in Photoshop. This design was actually developed during World War One and was planned to be used during the offensives of 19. Yo, Battlefield One. Good fucking game. Very good. Way better than Battlefield Five. 19. I could go on a long ass rant about how, why Battlefield 5 is just so bad. I'm going to. I don't care. I'm going on a tangent. Why would you make a World War 2 game and then not and then on release not have any of the battles that are popular from World War 2? Like you're trying to make a game that markets to a mass audience. Where the hell is like Stalingrad? Kursk? Uh, D-Day. They didn't even fucking have D-Day on release. I don't even think they ever made D-Day for Battlefield Five. What the fuck is that? I don't care if it's always been done before. There's a reason it's always been done before. Because it's fun. <laughs> Especially you should have fucking Stalingrad in a goddamn World War II game. <sighs> and had the war not ended. Because of this, it had many World War One era elements to its design, but also if I feel like that's gonna be a common theme here. Is World War One design, especially for slow, heavy tanks. 
that's just World War One, like mentality still playing a critical role in design and research. Few forward-thinking ones, including a three-man turret and interleaved road wheels. The tank required a small. You see, and I think this also plays a huge part and role into the way that these nations differently designed and were expecting to fight the war. You see the British and French having a more emphasis on these heavier, slower things. You know, right now we focused on like British designs. Um, the French, when the war started, were technologically superior in terms of heavy tanks or comparable, comparable to what the Germans had access to as well. They were prepared to fight a trench war again. That was what they were wanting to do. They were wanting to force the Germans into another stalemate. Even though it would have been costly again to the French and to the Belgians um, and also to the British in terms of manpower, um, that's the war that would, that was a safe way of fighting the war because it was more of a guarantee of victory because everyone knows Germany cannot fight a prolonged war because they don't have access to the resources and they don't have the Navy to take out the British Navy, which then in turn allows them to get resources shipped in from overseas, right? They don't have access to that, which is why trench warfare is very much a, a negative for the Germans. And hence why German doctrine would be more of an emphasis on speed, whereas that's not what the British and French focused on village of 12 men to crew that included four machine gunners and a radio operator. Although missing out in the combat of World War I, 10 of these tanks were activated during the French mobilization of 1939. Ooh. And during this time, there were various upgrades made in an attempt to modernize the- It looks like a pretty dangerous tank. More of probably of an infantry killer and not like a vehicle, mostly fight, by upgrading fight the other armor, tanks. but were held back and used for propaganda purposes as the French high command realized that they would do more good there than in combat given the realities of the war. Do you see a theme developing? <laughs> During the battle for France in 1940, however, six operational tanks of the 51st Battalion were lost in fighting near the Moose Moose station, with a few being captured You said <laughs> You said that's wrong. <laughs> ...by the Germans in eastern France. It begit. I'm sorry to anyone that's French, I have to, I have to go with the meme. I'm not even English. Well, I'm kind of English, but not really. I'm, I'm Swedish German. Ah, you know, I'm German, so I, I still get to make fun of the French. It's part of the ancestry, so. Yeah. Grab your oil reserves. Hold down your <laughs> oil reserves. This baby's gonna get you. Eventually. Somehow gonna be shipped from the U.S. to here. It is a T-95. Let's make some fucking oil. This is the first design we'll be discussing. Holy here. fucking shit. What the hell is that goddamn tank? It looks like a beast, though. It looks like it could fuck shit up if it was fast enough. Actually had World War II in mind, but was created, ironically, after running into World War I-type problems. Once the Allied troops reached the German border, they ran into the German defenses of the Siegfried Line. And although oh. a good amount of its defensive capability had been stripped to fortify the Atlantic Wall, it had proven a fairly difficult obstacle to get through. The American and British response to this was to create some super heavy anti-tank shell immune vehicles to just pile drive right through. The British created the tortoise, and the Americans created this, the T-95 <laughs> Doom Turtle. Not actual name. A super heavy self-propelled gun weighing 86 tons and mounting a high-velocity 105mm gun. The vehicle was designed to be able to absorb shots from German 88mm high-velocity guns and carried four sets of tracks on a bogey suspension to help displace the weight. The vehicle did have a lot of problems, though, being very underpowered which resulted in many breakdowns and just the simple fact that with it being so heavy, it would have been a nightmare to ship over to Europe. Yeah. Never mind finding rail cars that could transport it to the sector it needed to be in. Before the project was completed, the Siegfried line was overrun, but the vehicle continued testing into 1947 to learn about potential future super heavy designs, but was canceled once the military realized how ineffective super heavy vehicles were and just- it Took them that long to realize how ineffective they are? Yeah, it's decided they would no longer pursue research. Also, yeah, there's a I took I recently took a US military history course. US military doctrine is it's complicated as all things are in history, but US military its leadership 
Oh boy. It's historically the United States military is not that fucking good. Like it's purely because the United States military has access to overwhelming firepower is why it's successful. Without that it is Ooh, it's bad. Of the two prototypes created, one is still in existence. After being lost in the field for 30 years, it was taken to the patent museum. Lost in the field? Closed, is Hold on. This goddamn gargantuan ass motherfucking tank was lost for 30 freaking years? How? It's now in storage at Fort Benning and will be on display in 2020 when the museum opens. Bonus! Hooray! The Bob Semple Yay, bonus tank, me. <gasps> named after the news. Yes, Minister Bob Semple! took advantage of the most cutting edge technology available, including a tractor base and corrugated iron armor. Oh Jesus, what am I doing? Extremely heavy for its components, ranging it from looks 20 beautiful. to 25 tons. It's the most beautiful tank I've ever seen. The handle the sheer power the vehicle commanded, causing slow speeds, breakdowns, and the need to stop to change gears. Its six Bren guns were very inaccurate when firing from their mounts. This was deemed negligible though, as the sheer sight of it on the battlefield would render enemies motionless without even being hit. Unfortunately, this wonder weapon was never able to see service due to the Japanese never invading New Zealand. But then again, the Japanese probably never invaded New Zealand because the Bob Semple tank was present. To exactly. my knowledge, there are no Bob Semple tanks left. But you know what no. they say, the light that burns brightest does not burn for long. Thank you again to War Thunder for sponsor. This was, yeah, it's just, okay. Let's have the Bob Semple in view. To pay our respects to the most beautiful tank that was ever fucking made. Oh, it's gorgeous. Oh, god damn. It's amazing. That was Meme Tanks 3, thick boys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.